This video is an interview with one of the major innovators of surfing objects on waves of air. But first an introduction. Michael Thompson is a college student finishing up an engineering degree in Wisconsin. He's developed very thin and very slow flying foam gliders, which is a whole new branch of walk along gliding. He does extraordinary feats like this, one glider towing another. And he has a sense of humor. Here's one of his famous jag wings with faux blood stains. The thin foam it's made from couldn't hurt a mosquito. I owe a huge debt to Mike for many things. First, I was able to design a paper walk-along glider, but only after using one of Mike's early designs as a starting point. Throughout the process, I showered him with questions about flight theory and how flying wings maintain flight stability. He patiently explained in ways even I could understand. In 2010, I was invited to demonstrate walk-along gliders at the St. Louis Science Center. I realized that the only way I could quickly show museum visitors how to make and fly them was with the foam gliders that Mike had developed. I asked him to help me and the Science Center was happy to host him, so I finally was able to meet him at the museum where he got lots of people flying from kids to adults. I interviewed him right outside the front door of the St. Louis Science Center. Now you're the boss here, remember. Excellent. So this guy is trying to wherever you want. Hold it vertical. Keep it vertical like a wall. There you go. You got it. Look at that. Well, uh, I saw a TV show on Discovery Channel called Next Step, and during one segment of that show, uh, I saw somebody flying a paper airplane around in circles, and the guy uh, later learned it was John Collins. He was flying a paper airplane around with a piece of cardboard under it, and I wanted to do that ever since. And so I started practicing. I had learned how to make styrofoam airplanes around 2001, give or take. And so I was making styrofoam gliders uh, with balsa wood fuselages. The wings and tail were styrofoam. And I could not get them to fly right over cardboard. They would glide great and slow with a free, free glide from a hand launch. But when I put them over the cardboard, they would nose dive to the ground. So in frustration one time, one of my planes, uh, I threw it hard, the tail broke off, and then I decided I would try flying it again, just as a flying wing. And it actually flew that way, upside down, mind you. I bent the wing tips up the other way to compensate. And then uh, I was flying around this upside down broken glider with a piece of cardboard on it. I could only go for a few feet at a time, but it was starting to work. And so that was pretty much my introduction to walk along gliders uh, many years back, around 2001. Well, I got into the thin foam styrofoam gliders around 2000, 2001. Basically, it was driven out of my desire to make extremely lightweight, elegant, slow flying gliders that would stay in the air as long as possible. Now, my dad had a bandsaw down in his basement, so I lucked out quite a bit there, so I figured I'm going to try slicing styrofoam with this bandsaw. So I looked for a big block of wood that I could use to set up a uh, a barrier, a jig so to speak, so I could slice the foam and I tried a few cuts. It was pretty good, less than an eighth of an inch. I knew I could do better and I eventually found he had a nice 90 degree angle, angled uh, metal plate that you could fit into the guide slot on the bandsaw table and I, I ended up using that. I could adjust it very precisely and it would allow me to cut foam to a sixteenth of an inch or less. And that's pretty much the magic number for making a very slow, easy to fly glider of any sort, whether it's just for a gentle hand launch, just letting it go basically, or a walk along, which is what it's most well suited for. Now the styrofoam has its advantages and disadvantages. It's, it is very light, anything made from it will go extremely slowly. But the issue with it is it has a lot of holes and the surface finish, the surface roughness on it, it's pretty rough from the bandsaw cut. So the lift to drag ratio is fairly poor. It's the major disadvantage to foam at the moment and people right now are developing ways to get around it. 
by using hot wire cutters or even possibly different ways to cut either using a bandsaw or even a, a future idea is that was suggested to me when I was working at Parker Beechcraft from another employee. He suggested a deli slicer, a deli meat slicer. Um, not tried it yet, but it's going to be the next experiment when I have the time available to do such a thing. Okay, now basically, as far as the jag wing concept, I had learned about how certain types of real aircraft get lift. Most people have heard the explanation about how a typical wing basically redirects the airflow around it from the front to the back. It deflects it downward to get its lift. Well, there's a, a related yet different principle that's involved with a, a so-called delta wing airplane like the Concorde or a French Mirage fighter jet. Basically, those have a delta wing, just a very sharp triangle with an angle in the middle no more than about 60 degrees. That's about the maximum you can go. So in essence, it's like having a wingtip and a wingtip right together. There's no wing in the middle really. The wingtips on a normal airplane, you get vortices, those little swirling tornadoes at the wingtips that you can sometimes see in good photographs. Now on a delta wing airplane, those are the dominant mode for lift when it's going at slow speed and high angle of attack. The air just spills around that pointed leading edge and you get the tornadoes on top, essentially, which have low pressure in them, and that's where you get your lift from. Now I figured, ah, maybe I should try something like this. I had come up with uh, styrofoam plank flying wing gliders. They flew well enough, they could turn well, um, fairly stable. But they weren't quite as slow as I wanted. I had one that was particularly good. It was one of the earliest I had made, and all subsequent ones always flew faster. I could not get something that went slower than that first lucky glider, which had a little bit of, it even had some camber in the wing that helped the curvature of the airfoil. But I could not get subsequent airplanes to fly as slow as this one. So, on a hutch, I decided, okay, I'm gonna take advantage of this vortex lift. In my experience, any type of successful walk-along has to have a fairly large wingspan and a short overall length so that it all stays within a narrow zone of lift, so to speak, over the piece of cardboard that I would use. Now, to combine the two ideas, I cannot have one big delta wing. I can't just have one because it would have to either it would either be too long, it would stick too far forward in the aircraft with no time due to the difference in lift. Or if I swept it out so that the angle was a lot wider, it would not get the vortex lift at all. It would simply be like a swept back wing. It would not work. So to combine the two I figure, alright, I'll have lots of points. I'll have two or three or four. So I tried three on the first little glider on a hutch and tried it out. I was amazed at how mushy and easy it flew. It, the stall was incredibly gentle and it was very slow even with the extra weight on the nose. I've taken the idea further. I first took my plank flying wings, I cut serrations on the leading edge about one-fourth of the overall cord depth and that gave it much improved low speed handling, stability, stall resistance. It was just about win-win all the way around. The only disadvantage was with a slightly worse lift to drag ratio, but I could handle that. The important thing was getting good slow speed handling and just having something that was really that could really take turbulence well. And that's what the Jagwing concept allowed. The final refinement to it was an overall taper, making the wing tips and the points, the serrations, smaller. And this improves the handling because there's less weight out at the tips to steer and control when I'm maneuvering it. Keeping all the weight to the middle, in other words, a low moment of inertia is critical to handling of any sort of airplane model or otherwise.